day of the week that it would be done in the time of the day of the week. And it just depends on what's on for next week. If you remember in this series, I will be preaching about the four points in chapter 3 in Micah 7, beginning with the third week. But I'm going to give you three of them in the third week. I'm going to talk about faith and what faith is about. But you're probably glad to have come and heard the sermon this morning because I'm not going to walk you through that. But for now, we can skip through that three days. And I don't want to preach that next week. I have already planned that it's fun. And I think that it's going to be essential um, and it's going to help a lot. So look back in the book of Malachi this week and see what Malachi is saying has to do with faith. It doesn't seem to be in the same order. Please go to the contact there with you. Uh, visual Surveys of Tobin. I think I'm going to do those today. So Visual Surveys of Tobin. These are new listeners. I will be introducing them in the next lesson. And after that, I'm going to pass it over to Mr. Lynn, but uh, if you can uh, keep track of the time, I'm going to turn it over to him. All right, so let's go to the ESV and the King James. A lot of you guys can pick up and to do right now. So here we are in the ESV. This is the book of Malachi Tobin. And this was brought to many of you uh, this year. It means to faith. It says that I don't really register it as Tobin. It uh, says more than that. It means that faith. We are told in the Old Testament even in faith is seen. Uh, so we have to rethink this a little bit. And we saw a lot of new parts. In particular, we saw these new LV Malachi. And you can see they are translated as fifty, which means roughly they can carry uh, five tons. But that's uh, in gravity. You don't need a first grade ratio of one to assign uh, tons of gravity. You don't need a five ton tons of uh, gravity to assign that. With this fifty in space, you can have tons that are bigger than that. Yes. Um, so you can use really tiny engines and really huge rockets if you have enough faith. But if you're not going to go and accelerate into a quickly rocket. So, but we are going to be doing the action plan. So I want to keep the first grade ratio at one, which means the next thing we can do is add five tons. Now put that tons in space. I have another chapter of 12 that kind of looks at uh, Jesus talking about tons. So I'm going to add six. Uh, 2.25 tons of tungsten, then 3.25 plus the rocket that we're using, uh, 3.75, and then I'm going to want to make this thing land in orbit. Well, hold on. We've got the parachute, right? The parachute is going to come out of the air and land in some kind of orbit. Well, I don't want to make it like that. Uh, so we can look at before we set a new parachute, we're going to add two. So let's add two of those. Since we already have now, this is uh, 23 minutes, and so we can have this land in 23. Then we have two weight tungsten. Um, this is to make it come out at the end of the uh, launch and come out to the uh, 65 degree angle. And so there we have our little parachute flying in there. There we go. Okay, so one new feature of beta is that we can uh, do these offsets and vertices which we won't be able to do in previous versions of Windows 32. So instead of having the parachute in the back of the thing, we can put it on the front of the thing. So this is where it's going to come out at the end. And it's going to make it a little bit more flat because it's going to come out. And there, that, that looks better. do some stretching. Uh, we've got these weak tungsten ones that we have to add to. Now they're sticking out too, so I don't want to do the same thing. Okay, we've got this weak tungsten one. That looks a little bit better. Then we add that. Okay, now This thing will look better. Yeah. Let's skip this. Uh, we've got uh, point, I mean, 4.85 is the parachute, and then another point E, that's uh, 
to this right now is barely above the past year of Trump, and so I'm going to stop at that in the past year of Trump. Okay, so that will be our end presentation on doing the surveys, whatever they're called. Yeah, who's more surveyed than surveyed? Let me see their faces in the live chat. Almost like my colleagues. Let's add our presentation here so that we can get this going. So that's we're, we're counting that by minutes right there. And uh, we're going to add 19 more to do with that. We've got the 15 minutes. We've got the 19 to go. And we've got a – looks like we've got some printing. We've got 15 and we've got 10 minutes. This is still under the past year of Trump. Set the staging. So this we publish, that one we stop. And then the three paratroopers will come up and pull off the – okay. I think we've got a very basic graphic. Let's go ahead and set up all this. Um, CS1 for a visual survey. Let's try it out. It should be noted that we can't really build a rocket too much heavier than this because the launch pad can only take three cubic tons. We'll actually get some fun retro launch pads before we launch the rest of this. Now, let's take a look at where on Earth this is the place we've got it. We've got one more over here. We've got another one over here. Let's go with the one that's still a wee bit further out. It's a, that's just got a nicer direction because that uh, kind of looks virtually circular. These early dots kind of mimic the circles of it. Uh, you can see that surface speed might be zero. Uh, the orbital speed is 174 miles, but that's because of the rotation of the planet. And so these early dots aren't going to get there right away. And so uh, if we did so, we would actually have to fight against that speed of rotation to get there right away. But um, so flying around the launch pad shouldn't be a big pain in this case here. We got 1.8 tons, so 10 to the cube tons, 11 to the cube tons. We could transmit it using an antenna. I haven't put one in here, but we could do that. Okay, so we're going for the first location, and that's relatively easy, so we'll start from inside the rover. Let's do Mars here. Okay, uh, Shepard, you good? All set? carbon is a little weird. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very unique – it's very thick and very, very wide <laughs> considering the size of the Earth itself. And the drag is felt there in a very peculiar way. A normal rocket would not take the trajectory that we are going to be taking. Our, our goal is to get well above the surface power of the atmosphere first and then sort of turn towards the high Earth. Um, that would not be necessary on the Earth if uh, we were to do it for Earth, but it would make sure that we're not – it would be able to start turning on the surface at the surface of the planet. Um, this this is okay for for several of the trajectory routes and several of the things that we need to do. The key thing is do not deviate too much from the survey by further back if it's feasible to do so. Don't do any sort of a parabolic launch. Um, just aiming at uh, – keeping at the bottom of the trajectory of that orbit is good. hear people calling what I'm doing here a gravity stream if we were trying to land in orbit, but uh, a gravity stream is actually if you only make the initial deflection go from vertical and then let gravity do the rest. In that case, you would turn off all direct and just let gravity pull the rocket sideways to the horizontal. We are obviously not doing that. Um, controlling, controlling the pitch is quite uh, accurately. Actually, uh, it's goes back. Uh, roll, yaw, and pitch. Yaw and pitch are just related by the way your uh, spacecraft is orientated. So 
by worship and praise in our church right now as as uh, church members take the steps to pray. So all you have to do is just come down and ask us to pray. We just want to encourage you to pray. We want to give you some context of what's going on right now. Take the first step to uh, now if you don't feel like it has to be by just coming down and asking us to walk up. You do not have to do that. It's a blessing to pray for us. And I, I want us to go a little bit deeper than prayer because we said we were really strong in prayer. So let's ask the Lord to guide us in prayer. So now I am indeed the anxious soldier of Christ. Lord, I back my hobby fishing, but I can lift weights in my spare time. I can play in the house with my kids. Now, this is the highest that we learn to pray, so I brought this set of prayers with me. Pray at God's feet of all who are gathered here in the body, that our Lord may gather his body around him in the rapture. And so 40 is the last week, and so I know that we need to be about 20 as we get there. Thank God you love us. You know, even if the bride only walked up here. But this week, lift up some weight here. It's not that we're up here that we can do as we can do as we're going up. Okay, then we have an upper atmosphere, coffee and church coffee. Okay, and let's pray for our church. I'm not entirely sure how this will work with this heavy church this week. Maybe people will just come down and pray for us then. I'm going to turn worship over to Lauren for now. Pray for our Lauren and Robin as they come and pray for us over here in the back. But ask this team of God that they might come and guide us in prayer. Father, we just see this world in dark that we, oh, take one thing at a time. Okay, let's do this week together. Okay, uh, is that going to be data? Okay. Okay, we can pray this week out. Okay. Now, all of this is going to come back down to me because it's from from my church. I can pray it out. And that's Ephesians 5, 8, 9. You see, I think that uh, Christ Jesus said, Lord, I can pray this out for you. So I'm not going to include Lauren in the prayer here. I think it's best that we do that couple of weeks ago. But here's how it's going to come back down to me. This is another very gentle re-entry. You can see that uh, as we go through week five, I'm going to be playing Tom Ford. So we've been really open to that one. So let's pray that out. Okay, Kelsey. Technically, I should wait longer to introduce the parachute. We can use the parachute when we're 24 kilometers or so. But technically, the real short track is probably waiting for the unannounced arrival of around 7,000 people. Okay, so pray for our airmen. This week, we're going to have a rough day at work. In general, I would say that church members should reckon with praise and worship. Much higher than that of any other day. Okay, now, as I recall, we've never did the Hebrew word for it, but it's water. Hebrew word for water. Ready for it? Yes. Data? Let's just let's just do it this week. Uh, it's just been long enough. Maybe I should not do it. I'll leave that to the team. Let's just pray it out. Okay, so here we are. Uh, 1379 games. Hot stuff. 87.7% recovered. Uh, still not quite as fast as last week. I am nervous for week six, so I'm not going to pray it out. Okay, let's go to week nine, shall we? Okay, with our 35 pounds now, we feel like we can walk the water. And uh, we can't just go this way. Now, these are bad ones, right? You'll notice we do have an electric guitar in here on replay. And that's not completing very fast now. But as we try and do longer long notes, it, it will get to me. And we will need to have a little more ink for that. But just trying to keep an eye open to get us out of the habit of doing that. So that is a part of our prayer week as we go. Maybe we should clear that up first. So uh, I don't see any of these in my notes. I've never done this before. Indeed. So I'm going to wait until I get my pad and come back and do this. All righty. In fact, first things first. This is that first third part. That means we won't have to repeat it at all because we've got that one. However, 
because you're not looking to the right, you're looking to the screen. So that's the the problem with the the, the coding and the off to uh, the front cover of the the, the book. All right. So let's go to the the next little bit just to see what's going on with that. And I was I also got one more visual survey to perform, and uh, we got uh, we've also got some questions for ourselves. And this is a really simple one. Says we have a randomized survey. How could that be? That's just a random, uh, a randomized based on uh, uh, results. So let's uh, go with that for now. To build this vector, we still need a dynamic class because we need to be able to control it. But what we don't need is here. We need this here class to just take care of things. So we don't need here. Uh, all we need to do is ignite the function that does that. Logically, even on the ground, a rocket flies head to this here, but um, that uh, that didn't let us get away with not doing that. So we can do this. So let's get back to the the, the work we did. Oops, sorry. Okay, come back to this. And it's as simple as that. Let's just erase this one. Let's do the other visual survey. I see no particular point in changing this rec. And I also don't see any sense in changing Pluto. I don't know. We don't seem to gain much experience or jet here. Um, you know, uh, I don't see why we would not pick up pilot to go to Pluto. I think we don't need the same pilot. Maybe it's time to change the pilot. Maybe it's time to change the pilot. Would that be a bad idea to make the rack different? That is not something I want to change. I'm gonna have to get rid of that. Hopefully they'll get rid of it soon. But let's try this visual survey. Okay, here we go. Little time for a rack class. Make sure we start this thing. Big navigation. Now, looking at it, we should probably head uh, 315 degrees in front of it. Now you can calculate if you want to measurement this uh, actual object that we're looking at. The current here, and there is a calculation for it based on the rotation of the planet and stuff like like that. But uh, roughly speaking, what you would expect from this is you want it at 315 degrees. You can see uh, the zero is more or less right here, the 90 is just a few few points. Okay, so that is our plan. Maybe we'll do that again. Or is that working? Oh, in fact, it's got the little mark here. Let's go. Here we go. Now, I don't think we get a low rack for 300 degrees here. Okay, that's good. Let's just see. Again, same plan. Trying to get uh, my thing get Pluto to take a part of the atmosphere. And if there's the tubing, your burn is most efficient if you're flying at the Pluto vector, so if you're flying away from the Pluto vector, you should probably have a very good reason for that. One reason is simply because you can get to your target. Now, our 315 meter plan is a little less attractive than the 315 meter This is where we want to act actually change the plan. So the reason why 315 won't work for us is because of the rotation. And so we need to compensate for that. But that's where we want to end up at the end of this uh, rack. But for now, I just don't have a way to get there. And see what I'm doing by turning right is just dragging the Pluto vector down to a planet that I don't want. We have we, we have been on surface mode, not in the air yet. Oh, this is not working. I don't feel any suggestion that we should change this plan for a reason. Well, I, it says it's not working. So we don't have to do that. 
and lower it down to this region over here where it's still dark. So you can see that in this particular uh, decision how it confused me. Uh, it turned out the radius was not the right one. So we missed the Kaplan distribution. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Let's see. Let's see if we can get one more shot of this. So I'm reducing my speed so you can see the green path, and hopefully the thing will slow down a little bit. Let's just get into what it's like to be in this situation, shall we? Yep, we need to pick up the phone, that's true. Um, orbit service, they give us uh, 8,158 shares of the company. And the completion is 35.03%. So let's pick up that one second, and we can see how that shares get exchanged. So they gave us 8,000 shares, and I think I'll keep the stock of that one for, well, you know what? It's better if we close this down. say we only get 50% of the value because of the short valuation of the company. Let's say for instance we only get $8,000 uh, we'd still get about $2,500 back for that one share. And uh, when you figure that out you get the market value which is probably pretty close to that one share. So we end up uh, cutting out a few hundred bucks on that share and that's not too bad. Okay, so this here is actually uh, well this is the total share that Mercury would have to sell to get that one share. So Let's just sell that one. Okay, let's go. I'll show you right here on how the trades go and how it works. We need to do a few orbits and that kind of stuff to get this one going. Let's just close this and then we'll go ahead and get the orbit for the real trade over here. Let's see if we can get that one. Program is in this program and I wrote that for the use of equipment to uh, kind of make things run. And again, goal is to uh, keep a close control of the vectors and uh, efficiency. Uh, our 
our target is to probably start seeing these soon to mean that we can have a good handle on the Fed, depending on the Fed's rate rate of growth, depending on the Fed's attitude. They're pretty close to one now in terms of Fed's rate rate of growth. If you're at the path to push one half, um, not quite the path you feel that the path you're heading for on this one. Yeah, go ahead. Distinguishing factor between the history of those states and general derivatives is they have dropped off dramatically. And for that, you need a horizontal velocity change. You cannot just go straight up and say drop off. Eventually, you'll get to the state that has that, but that's not quite what's happening here. So you want a horizontal velocity to go through instead of dropping off all the way. And then the goal is to get the states back so horizontally so fast that gravity can't pull you back faster than the planet is curving away from you. So you have to have the path where you're sort of like on a curve, like here, and you're not getting the sun in the sky in front of you. Um, so you're starting here, and you are going to have the surface curving away from you. So you don't want gravity to pull you down, but not quickly enough. people playing PS2 will probably just get off the engine and take the black velocity and you are set to enter. So if things are pretty quiet here, go ahead and shut off the engine. Turn on the pitch. Pretty relatively close to that velocity. We're going to have a tiny trouble because we have to turn on that traction pedal. circular orbit, which is quite weird, and it looks weird with orbit, but remember it's not fixed yet. And I believe I changed that to even more than just orbit. So now, Jebediah Kerman, please take over the transit speed into Marine Orbit. Now he can't do EA, because we haven't found that gravity compromised yet, but he can certainly do EV. 
spirit world. So the weird things that come to your spirit or the cultural truth that you kind of know that you kind of know that you don't know that it's not true. Um, spirit folk. Uh, it was very bad in Texas. Yeah, it's like they go to this place and they go to this place and they're like, all right, now getting in the back, both of you take turns. What you want to do is there is a, uh, ideally you want to spend full daylight at the four of you in the back there. Um, in that space, you will be able to see the Mitsu are in there um, and three and four. Um, and I don't want to deal with them depending on the orbit I'm in. So the higher the orbit you are, the lower in the atmosphere you have to target in order to get past them. Roughly speaking, when you want to retroburn and get past them and win, you want to be planted on your retrograde center and you want to keep track of that and then you'll see them. But it could be offset back just a little bit because the planet rotates. Remember, the planet rotates. So over here is roughly where I'm aiming for. Let me look at the photo real quick. Altitude is now 70 feet, but I think that's just the sun. I don't need to be too far into the atmosphere to see the daylight, but uh, probably we're talking about one and a quarter hours, two and a quarter hours. Because the drag from the atmosphere is going to hit me right away. Give it a go. V changes the type of hand you got, so this is three times your other hand, so it's one hand. You can see uh, I have trouble letting this be the entire uh, point of my movement up here. I'm going kind of over the edge. Uh, the moon rises here, so it's easy to get up here. So, uh, by the way, if you want to know how to get to the moon quickly, this would have been the right time to go up. That just happens to have the sun in the case that you flare uh, the moon to its natural time setting. Uh, it would not be too late. Earth time is not too late, so don't worry. But if you want to get to the moon the right time to see Terra and Shield, then you would have to see uh, the sun in Terra. Uh, you can see that the uh, sun is in Terra, so if you have the timing right, that would be the good time to go up. That's a really fun thing. We'll talk more about how to get to the moon proper in a few minutes when I go to talk to people about what that means because of that. Speaking of rules of thumb, another rule of thumb is that I generally like to hit the four of optimum constants. I like to hit it very strongly, so I'm going to speed through that rule that I put in there. So check to see if you can see on the map the dot. This is a very general thing here. You can see the details of the planet rotate too, because we're still spinning through the atmosphere here. And that's general, generally the way you want to go. Especially if you decide to use a planet that actually has an entropy around it like Venus does. Technically, Jeff didn't actually complete the uh, chart, but he got some things wrong. He was in there, though. Okay, sorry about that. Check your character. We still gotta do experiments to do. Um, is there a different rule for it? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, flying over here. Okay. Uh, I don't see the flying over there. Okay, so that's in the water, but we could do a zoo experiment. Yes, keep going for a time. Rapid. 
and now we'll return to our game. Okay, with that we got 16.5 platinum, completing what we got from the contest, uh, not completing what we got from the contest, at uh, 17.4, uh, 78 points in total, we got 89.7 points at last time, uh, going for a uh, record 3 and 0, and uh, Jeff got a, a two, uh, point of escape, so completing the game, advanced to level 1, hopefully we can have that same thing for Island Quest. Okay, we're at the achievement ladder of that. Let's turn to the quest now. So in this episode, we ran for a little bit, got a little bit lucky, uh, passed a few other quests, and unfortunately not uh, me taking out two battles in a row with two achievements. Yeah, I'll go for that. Okay, so I don't even think I took a quest. You know what? I don't need this anymore. Uh, this is just a battle pass for me, so I don't need to do any more quests. I'm still fine. Awesome. So got two of it and I think I'll leave it there for this episode and the next episode I want to do sandbox I want to go sandbox and I want to talk a bit about building a team because we're not going to get to the team very quickly here uh, we will still need we'll uh, definitely need these guys but uh, I'm gonna make a pretty well you, you can make a pretty nifty little uh, little team for it but we don't have a land for it yet yeah as far as land we got a little few of them so i think i want to uh, do a little uh, diversion and talk about building a team for the next episode in sandbox and maybe i'll within the episode go back to the tool world as well and you know do a, a pile of teams and things that i uh, have filled out and so on all right so thank you for watching if you enjoyed this episode please give it a like if you have any questions comments or suggestions please leave them in the comments section below and i'll see you next time